Welcome back to Mastering C++ 20 Features. In this short lecture, I want to briefly discuss the terms lazy and eager coroutines. These terms are not unique to C++ 20 coroutines, but have been around for quite a while. The Kotlin programming language has in fact built in primitives named as lazy and eager specifically to deal with such classes of coroutines. Lazy and eager coroutines are just technical terms used in the coroutine community to talk about how coroutines start their initial execution. There is no special keyword or header as of now in C++ to create lazy or eager coroutine. And one can simply look at the return object of the coroutine and identify if a coroutine is lazily started or eagerly started. So let's understand these terms. Lazily started coroutine refer to the coroutine that suspend immediately on initial call. And the first line in the body of the coroutine executes only when the coroutine is resumed in the client code. These coroutines can be identified by observing the return type of the initial suspend method within the promise type object. For example, because of presence of std suspend always awaiter in this case causes the runtime system to immediately suspend the coroutine and return the execution control back to the caller of the coroutine. In contrast, eagerly started coroutines start execution of the body of coroutine immediately and the first line of the coroutine body executes without external resume operation. These coroutines can be identified for example, by presence of std suspend never awaiter as a return value from the initial suspend method within the promise type object. Let's quickly take a look at some coding examples. In this file, I have a return object called lazy task, and in line number 12, if you notice, the method initial suspend returns std suspend always, which causes the runtime system to suspend the coroutine and return the execution control back to the color of the coroutine. In line number 26, we have a coroutine called lazy coroutine. And within the body of this coroutine, the first line is stdc out statement, followed by a co await std suspend always, which suspends the coroutine and returns the control back to the color of the coroutine. And finally, a last stdc out statement, which indicates that the coroutine has finished execution. In the main function, the coroutine is executed and the coroutine handle is captured in a variable called task. The type alias for this task is defined in line number 33. And it indicates that this task is simply a coroutine handle. If I compile and run the program, the first line in the coroutine is not executed. Instead, we see that the control returned to the main function. This is because a call to the initial suspend method by the runtime system suspends the coroutine and returns the execution control back to the caller of the coroutine. If we resume the coroutine by calling the overloaded bracket operator on the coroutine handle, let's do that here. We can see that the first line within the body of the coroutine gets printed. And if I repeat this step again, the second line within the body of the coroutine is also printed and the coroutine finished execution. And in this file, we have the return object named eager task whose initial suspend method returns suspend never, which causes the runtime system to not suspend the coroutine. And consequently, the first line within the body of the coroutine defined in line number 26 executes and this gets printed on the console. So if I compile the program and run the executable, we can see that the first line within the body of the coroutine is executed. If I again resume the coroutine handle, the second line of the coroutine is also printed and the coroutine finishes execution. So that was all for this lecture. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next lecture. Hello there. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions or if you would like to start a discussion on the topic covered in this lecture, please feel free to leave a comment on this video. And lastly, if you are interested to learn more about my courses, then log on to my course website.
mastering minus modern minus cpp minus features dot scientific dot com. Thank you.